Well, good day to everyone joining us and welcome to today's X Talks webinar. Today's talk is entitled Anti-Idiotypic Antibody Platforms for Accelerating Antibody Drug Discovery. My name is Ryan Muse and I'll be your X Talks host for today. Today's webinar will run for approximately 60 minutes and this presentation includes a Q&A session with our speaker. Now, the webinar is designed to be interactive and webinars work best when you're involved. So please feel free to submit your questions and comments for our speakers throughout the presentation using the questions chat box. And we'll try to attend to your questions during the Q&A session. This chat box is located in the control panel, which is on the right hand side of your screen. And if you require any assistance along the way, you can contact me at any time by sending a message using the same chat panel. At this time, know that all participants are in listen-only mode, and please note that the event will be recorded and made available for streaming on xtalks.com. At this point, I'd like to thank GenScript, who developed the content for this presentation. GenScript, a leading contract research organization, provides gene, peptide, protein, CRISPR, and antibody services. Since 2002, it has grown through partnerships with scientists in life science research, biomedical research, and pharmaceutical development. GenScript is recognized for its biological research services, including gene synthesis, peptide synthesis, custom antibody and protein engineering, and pharmacology aimed at making research easy. Now I'd like to introduce our speaker for today's event. Dr. Wei Hui Fun Tan is a global product manager at GenScript, overseeing antibody production services. She earned her PhD in biological sciences from Nanyang Technological University, Singapore, and pursued a two-year postdoctoral fellowship in cancer research. Dr. Tan has served in various roles at GenScript, supporting proteins and antibody production services, engaging in pre- and post-sale activities, and providing training. Currently, she contributes to the launch of new services and studies global market trends. But without further ado, let's go ahead and hand things over to our speaker, Dr. Hui Fun Tan. You may begin when you're ready. Okay. Okay. Um, thanks, Ryan, for the introductions and good hi, everyone. And thanks for taking time to attend today's webinar. I'm happy to be here to share how does anti idiotypic antibody platform to accelerate antibody drug discovery. I'm Hui Fun, the global product manager from GeneScript. Please feel free to leave your questions in the chat box and I shall try my best to answer you later on. In today's webinar, I shall first talk about why is anti-idiotypic antibodies and its applications. After that, I shall share the current challenge in antibody drug discovery and how to overcome anti-ID development and challenge and solutions, followed by the, our GeneScript anti-ID development strategies and some uh, success case project we have delivered. Lastly, I shall end my presentation with some strategy we use in the pharmacokinetic and ADA kit development. First, let's start with an overview of the anti-idiotypic antibodies. So what is anti-idiotypic antibodies? Anti-idiotypic antibodies, also called anti-ID antibodies, which are the antibodies that bind to the idiotopes of the another's antibodies, usually an antibody drugs. And idiotypes can be defined as a specific combinations of idiotopes um, present within the anti antibody com complement determining regions. A single idiotope is a specific region within an antibody variable regions which bind to the paratops and then of a different antibody. The paratops could actually bind directly with the epitopes of the antigens and therefore an and in the old tops can be considered almost synonymous with an antigenic determinants of uh, antibodies. There are three main types of NDID antibody based on the way that interacts and uh, detects an ND, uh, and antibody drug, which show here. The first uh, is an anti antigen blocking NDID antibody. It is named so because the antibody drugs, um, paratox and idiotops overlap with one another. Because of this, the antibody drug targets antigens and NDID antibody will compete with one another and NDID act as the inhibitories and neutralizing. Therefore, this form of anti-IDs antibodies will only detect free antibody drug. 
The second type of anti-ID antibody is called non-blocking um, because the antibody drug paratops and the idiotops do not overlap and um, therefore the anti-ID antibodies and the antigens can simultaneously bind to the antibody drugs without affecting one another binding capability. Because of this, the non-blocking anti-ID uh, antibodies are used to detect all forms of available antibody drugs, which include free and antigens bound. And the third type of the anti-ID antibody is a complex uh, specific anti-ID. This is because uh, the anti-ID antibody cannot bind to the antibody drug uh, unless the drug is already bound to its antigens. Therefore, this type of anti-ID antibody is only able to detect um, bound antibody drug. So blocking and non-blocking anti-ID antibodies are useful for PK or ADA kit ACA development. So anti-idiotypic antibody can be generated to bind to specific uh, specifically to a biological drug. This uh, highly specialized antibody can be used to set out a pharmacokinetic assay in different format to measure free or total drug level in the preclinical and clinical sample, or used as a positive control in the ADA assay. Other than that, there are researchers working on anti-ID antibodies as a vaccine to stimulate anti-tumor immunity. It is one of the several promising immunological approach to the therapy of the cancer. Since most anti-ID antibodies are generated uh, against a specific biological drug, they are commonly used in a preclinical uh, practice for PK analysis. PK is the studies of the drug metabolism throughout the bodies. Uh, specifically, clinicians will determine the rate of the drug uh, uh, absorptions, distributions, bioavailability, and excretions in various cohorts of the patients. In order to accomplish this, researchers need to able to track the antibody drugs which are bound and unbound to their uh, designate targets at various time points post-delivery. Through the use of anti-ID, various forms of the therapeutics uh, can be easily tracked and uh, quantified in patient serum, blood, urines or other body fluid. In the right figure, the blood uh, drug concentration time curve, we can actually see the durations of effective drug concentration is different in the blood because of the different administration methods. So a quantitative uh, method for detections of the effective drug concentrations and the, the toxic drug concentrations is necessary for the ASA. So immunogenicity is the abilities of the therapy, uh, such as an antibody drug to induce a humoral or cell-mediated immune response, which lead to developments of anti-drugs antibodies. Anti-drugs antibody leads to a negation of uh, all antibody drug-related effects, is essentially completely inhibiting the therapeutic aspect of the drug. Some unexpected um, immune reactions may lead to uh, neutralize the biological activities of the drug or cross immune reactions. These may lead to allergic reactions, arteries or vein blockage and cytokine release symptoms. The, uh, the non-blocking ADA actually could bind to antibody drug and affect the drug ADME, while the blocking ADA uh, could actually affect the binding of the drug to the targets, which may actually reduce the drug efficacy. Therefore, it is extremely important for researchers to analyze the immunogenicities of a new antibody drug during the preclinical analysis. An antibody drugs um, is very similar to an anti-ID since both bind to the same antibody drug. Therefore, a pool of polyclonous anti-ID can be used as a positive control when analyzing for the presence of the anti-drug antibody within the patient samples. So besides extensive uh, studies in the animal tumor uh, models has demonstrated that uh, the efficacy of the anti-ID vaccine in preventing tumor growth and uh, curing mice with the established tumor, a number of monoclonal anti-ID uh, antibody that mimic the distinct human uh, tumor associated antigens has been developed and tested in the clinic and the demonstrate encouraging results. Anti-idiotypic vaccine can stimul uh, stimulate the body to produce antibodies against the tumor cell. 
Rakotumumid um, is an anti idiotypic mouse monoclonal antibody that may meet the NGC gangrocyte, thus uh, trigger an immune response against the tumor antigens NGC GM3. Therefore, rather than being a passive uh, antibody therapy, Rakotumumid as a therapy, uh, therapeutic vaccine in melanoma, breast, and lung cancer patients, Rakotumumid was uh, was able to elicit a specific immune response that recognized and directly killed the tumor cell expressing the new antigens by a mechanism of oncotic necrosis. So next I will share the current challenge in the anti and antibody drug discovery and how to overcome the anti-ID development challenge and solutions in the coming sections. So through several decades of the developments and the exploration, therapeutic antibodies has um, become the most widely used and approved therapeutic methods in uh, clinical uh, practice to treat various diseases. A drug discovery a program initiated because there is a disease or clinical condition without a suitable medical products available availability and due to the unmade clinic uh, needs, which is the underlying drying motivations for the projects. Different phase of the drug and discovery process involve different strategy and design. In the target discovery, uh, the therapeutic targets are identified and characterized through different approach, uh, such as the genome-wide associations with a particular disease. And then uh, scientists have to uh, perform in vitro and in vivo experiments to identify the targets. Besides then that, uh, X-ray X-ray crystallography is utilized to determine the 3D structures of the protein's ligand complex, as well as some other tools and criteria to validate the crystal structure available in the database. The crystal structures of the protein ligands complex analysis allow the studies of the specific interactions of a particular drug with its protein's targets at the atomic level. It helped to design and improve the drug. In the, in the target generation phase, validations of antigens targets are used to generate the therapeutic target antibody candidates by eliciting an immune response through the anti antigenics presentation. Scientists have to perform high throughput screening to actually define and execute the strategy for evaluating non-cross um, reactive antibody. Through the structural-based studies, uh, drug design and molecular dynamics um, analysis to develop bindings and functional assay and select the lead molecules with desired functions and favorable biochemical and biophysical properties to make sure the in vitro safety assessment and in vivo efficacy as well. In the lead validations and optimization phase, scientists would like to actually improve the lead safety, efficacy, and developability through medical uh, chemistries and rational drug design strategies to optimize drug life pro uh, properties and also perform absorption, distribution, metabolism, excretion, and toxicity study to validate the optimize, uh, to optimize and the leads. Once the lead candidates are identified, the preclinical study are required. Um, preclinical study are required to evaluate their safety. So preclinical trial are conduct on a non-human subject to study the efficacy, toxicity, and the pharmacokinetic of, of the therapeutic antibody. This is the last uh, antibody discovery stage um, before moving on to clinical trial studies. In this phase, in vitro and in vivo ACA are carried out to ensure the safeness and of the candidates. Commercial assessment, legal evaluation, clinical biomarker plans, regulatory plans, manufacturing plans, and patient certification plans will be designed before moving on the clinical trial. So antibody drug discovery is an arduous process that often actually start with the extensive screenings of antibody uh, library to identify optimal candidates, namely those having high affinity antigens, bindings, and other desir uh, desirable fu um, functional properties. 
these are some of the challenges uh, which actually scientists encounter nowadays on the antibody drug discovery route. Antibody are expensive uh, to produce because of the difficulty process of isolating and quality testing thousands and thousands of candidates. This process can take up to uh, years and require a lot of technical expertise to synthesize one therapeutic drug. Therefore, timeline and the financial issue are always the main problems in the drug discovery and development. Other than that, manufacturing issue uh, such as instability of the antibody, um, undesirable byproducts from the manufacturing process, you and quality inconsistency or unable to uh, reproduce the products also will lead to discovery process delay and appropriate targets, um, screenings and selections uh, methods are required to ensure the targets and leads are correctly selected before um, further validation. Insufficient validations of drug targets uh, at the early stage has been linked to costly clinical failure and low drug approval rate. Besides um, antibody drug development, safety and the efficacy play, play a crucial role in the antibody drug discovery. This actually involves several uh, optimization strategy and methods to improve the final drug candidates. Without a proper drug optimizations and modification step, many potential candidates are unable to pass through the safety and efficacy tests. Therefore, select a proper algorithm design is important. The rapid pace of the in, uh, scientific advance in enables a greater understanding of disease at the molecular level. In turn, scientific, technical, and regulatory challenges related to drug Discover, uh, developments actually create a complexity as companies of, often focus their R&D where the science is difficult and the failure risks are really high. As a result, the process of the researching and developing a new medicine uh, is uh, growing in difficulty and length. On average, it takes at least, at least 10 years for a new medicine to complete their journey from initial discovery to a marketplace, with clinical trial alone actually taking six to seven years on average. The average cost to research and develop each um, uh, successful drug is estimated to be 2.6 billion. This number actually incorporates the cost of failure, which include the thousands and sometimes millions of compound that may be actually screened and assessed in early R&D process, only a few of which will ultimately receive approval. The overall probabilities of a clinical success is uh, estimated to be less than 12%. Success requires immense research which uh, include the best scientific mind and high sophisticated technology, ever-evolving uh, manufacturing process and complex project management. Pharmacokinetic and immunogenicity research run through the entire life cycle of the drug development and drug safety and efficacy is crucial in the drug uh, discovery process. More attention has been paid in the research of the therapeutic drug, which has been uh, become the consensus of the drug administration authorities and medical research. Without passing through the authority requirements, the selected drug will not be marketed and all the hard work will go into drain. Therefore, establishment of non-clinical analysis and evaluation methods can provide an early guidance for clinical research. It helps to improve the safety and efficacy of the drug. The FDA and MPA and other regulatory agencies require the drug's uh, effectiveness and safety must be demonstrated in the animals before it enters the clinics. Both preclinical and clinical study need to study the PK and ADA of, of the drug. Therefore, the establishment of a good PK or ADA ACA is extremely important for the preclinical clinical analysis and evaluation of the drug. However, there are some challenges in developing a good qualities of anti-ID antibody, which are suitable for PK and ADA analysis in drug discovery process. Low immunogenicity of uh, antibody target CDR region, this will actually cause low immune response and therefore low anti-ID will be generated. Therefore, 
in GeneScript, we actually um, perform an immunogens um, design with KLH conjugate or using a FAB2 as an immunogen to reduce the non-specific of FC generated anti-ID or using a proprietary immunoadjuvant to improve the immunogenicity of the targets. Besides, we actually also provide different uh, animal hosts such as mouse uh, or rabbit for immunization. Therefore, uh, through our in-house analysis of a software, to we can actually identify the target's antigens is immunogenicity level in different hosts and based on the outcome to select the suitable host. Other than that, using uh, our proprietary express immunization methods to improve the positive um, target hit. The second challenge uh, in anti-ID developments, we actually commonly see the high cross reactivities with humans IgG occur. Therefore, through our proprietary express uh, immunization method to reduce the chances of uh, non-specific antibody generations and also by uh, multiple screening strategies like counter, counter screenings of the total human uh, IgG or other isotype control to prevent the cross reactivity occur. Generations of specific um, target clones is also a tedious task as well. Some uh, ASA require um, blocking and uh, anti-IDs and some require non-blocking uh, anti-ID. Therefore, we actually can try out on different animal hosts to develop the antibody and also perform uh, epitope beanings, antibody pairings, affinity ranking, antibody blocking to eliminate those kind of uh, unwanted clones. So uh, here is the poll question. Um, yeah. Yes, thank you. So we have a polling question available to audiences right now. Uh, it should be appearing on everyone's screen at this time, and you can participate by selecting on any of the answers you see in front of you and then clicking submit. The question we're asking is, are you working on anti-ID development projects? Your answer options are yes, no, or maybe soon. Give everyone some time to consider their answer to the question of, are you working on anti-ID development projects? It looks like most of you have submitted an answer, so thank you very much for participating. Let's take a look at the results. It looks like we have 60% of you selecting no, 27% for yes, and then 13% for maybe soon. So again, thank you very much, and I'll hand it back to you, Dr. Tan. Thank you. Thanks for your answer, yeah. Okay, let's move on to the next sections. So in the next sections, um, I will I will discuss what are the strategy GeneSquid actually perform in anti-ID development and some success case studies. So in the first step of the anti-ID development, which is the immunogens um, preparations, we can actually perform antibody fragmentations and conjugations in this step. The FC regions of the antibody drug is the same as the antibody circulating in the human body. Therefore, antibody fragmentations is used to remove the FC part from the antibody drug by propane's digestions or the pepsin digestion and afterwards go through the protein A or protein G purification to remove remove the FC region to avoid the non-specific developments of anti-ID. Afterwards, the FAB or FAB2 can be used for the immunizations. Others uh, immunogens such as like bispecific antibody, VHH, SCFV and antibody drug conjugates can be used directly for immunization. However, for small molecules such as um, peptide, DNA, RNA require conjugation uh, in, in the process. And then the inactive um, virus and virus-like particle could also be used directly for immunizations. Other, others like the GCT related elements like CAR, TCR, Cas9 can also be used as an immunogen directly while sRNA, sgRNA, DNA and RNA require conjugation before immunizations. 
So after the immunogen is prepared, we will actually perform uh, either express or a com conventional immunization in rabbits or um, mouse platform. And then uh, it depends on the client um, project requirement as well. In the ADA uh, polyclonus antibody development, antibody is isolated from the immunized rabbit's blood. And the ADA polyclonus will be purified with the antigens affinity colons and further purified by the total human IgG column to remove the cross-reacting anti-ADA. So in the monoclonal rabbits and the ID developments, peripheral uh, PB, PBMC will be uh, are isolated from the immunized rabbits and we will actually perform the proprietary B cell enrichment step to improve the positive targets antibodies and enrich the B cell will be cultured in the 96 well plate for further culture. The antibody in the supernatants will be tested by indirect ELISA to distinguish the antibody which can be only react with the antibody drug but not cross react with the total human IgG or the, or the isotope control. Uh, and, a control antibody. After that, the selected um, antibody will be moved on to the antibody sequencing and the recombinant antibody generation. In the mouse monoclonal anti-ID developments, spinocytes uh, are harvested from the immunized rabbits and fused with the myeloma cell to form a hybridoma cell. Afterwards, one round of a uh, one round of cell cloning and hybridoma clones validations are performed. Ultimately, the selected clones will go on with antibody sequencing and recombinant antibody productions. Our NTID development's workflow is flexible and customizable. Therefore, we can actually design based on the client needs. Here, I would like to share some of the success uh, case for NTID development. We actually successfully deliver to our client based on their requirement. First, uh, let's look at the ADA um, developments. In the standard um, monoclonal targets projects, monoclonal antibody is digested by pepsin and FAB2 is isolated for immunization. In this project, we perform express immunization. From this plot, we can actually find out that the purified ADA uh, is positive towards to the monoclonal antibody and FAB2, but negative to the total human IgG. We actually successfully deliver uh, 42.9 milligram to the client in, uh, for the, in 43 business day. In the second uh, ADA case studies, we actually immunized the rabbits with the bispecific antibody. Bispecific antibodies are generated um, a genetically engineered um, antibody with two specific antibody binding sites that recognize two different epitopes or antigens. Compared with the monospecific uh, antibody drugs, bispecific antibody often have an increased tendency for portulysis, aggregations, physical instability, and so on. Also, the binding of the two different antigens um, binding site to their corresponding ligands may create a large steric hydrins effects on each other. Consider these um, factors, it is very challenging to screen the anti-ID against different uh, antigens binding epitopes of bispecific antibody. However, we actually success to deliver a 56.8 milligram ADA in 78 days with a good binding to bispecific antibody and negative to the total human IgG. So in the third uh, ADA development project, which uh, are use a VHH or SEFV as the immunogens, in the VHH um, targets project, the generated uh, ADA is positive towards to the targets immunogen and negative towards to the total human IgG as well. And we 5.3 milligram total ADA was successfully delivered to client end in 45 business days. In SCFE um, targets project, the generated ADA is positive towards to the target immunogen and negative to the IgG4, and 10.8 milligram total ADA were also successfully delivered to client and in 91 business day. So antibody conjugates offer an uh, innovative and practical therapeutic um, application that combine the potent cell killing activities of the highly cytotoxic uh, small molecules drug with a uh, unique anti-tumor activity. The increasing rise in the research and development activity have uh, actually result in a 
capacity to generate advanced antibody drug conjugates. Here we are also uh, able to develop ADA for the ADC and the protein drug conjugate targets. In the ADC targets, we are able to generate the ADA which is positive um, towards the immunogens and negative towards the total human IgG. And in total, 23.2 milligram uh, ADA were actually successfully delivered to our client and in 40, 40 business day. In the pay-related um, protein targets, we are able to um, generate the ADA which has the uh, ELISA title more than 128,000 and the total 75.0 milligram, uh, milligram ADA was successfully delivered to the clients and in 60 business days as well. So this is the ADA case um, uh, study uh, table summary of different immunogen targets. And based on different immunizations um, uh, methods, we actually found out that our express immunization strategy do not affect the uh, ADA uh, amount with a shorter turnaround time. Besides, although the ADA generated from the BHH is lower than the monoclonal antibody as uh, target as target immunogen we are able we are still able to generate ADA amount more than 1 mg per rabbit moreover our generated ADA purity is more than 90% and the ELISA title is, of the purified ADA is more than 1 million and the cross absorption is less than 2% so next, I will share some of the case study we have actually done in the mouse anti-ID monoclonal antibody. The target is monoclonal drug um, and it, it was actually digested and FAB2 were isolated. And the express monoboost immunizations were used and two rounds of the cell fusions were performed and to obtain a blocking and non-blocking anti-ID monoclonal antibody. In this project, we obtained a, uh, 2,249 FAB2 positive uh, clones and, and negative to the total human IgG. And after that, 84 out of those selected 136 from the 2,249 clones were validated and they are FAB2 and the full length um, antibody double positive and total human IgG negative clones. With the blocking, uh, we are also with the blocking ELISA perform um, on the top 20 clones. We actually finally obtained a 14 blockers and six non-blockers. So the table below uh, is the blocking ELISA screening data of the supernatants from the parental clones. One to 14 clones are the blocking clones with a blocking rate more than 80%. And clone 15 to 20 are non-blocking clones with a blocking rate less than 30%. In this case, we use a FAP2 as a immunogens and immunized animal with the monoboost strategies, obtain a large numbers of antigens um, positive clones and successfully deliver blockings and non-blocking anti-ID in a short timeline. So in another mouse anti-ID mouse uh, monoclonal antibody generation case, FAB was used as a target antigen for immunization and three rounds of uh, fusions were performed um, to obtain a blocking and non-blocking anti-ID MAV. In this project, we actually obtained a 491 FAB positive clones and negative towards the isotype control. After that, 54 out of those selected 154 are blockers or non-blockers and with the blocking ELISA performed on those um, clones, we actually obtained seven blockers and three non-blockers. The table below is the blocking ELISA screening data of the supernatants uh, from the parental clones. One to seven uh, are the blocking clone with a blocking rate more than 80%, and the clone eight to 10 are non-blocking clones with a blocking rate less than 30%. Here, I would like to share some of the rabbits anti-ID monoclonal antibody case. In this case, the MMAE toxin from antibody drug conjugates is the target's immunogens and was conjugated with the KLH and used as an immunogen to perform the express immunization to obtain the anti-MMAE antibody without cross-react with the MMAF. 
one round of B cell cloning was performed and 214 clones um, positive towards to the immunogen were obtained. We also performed a blocking ELISA assay and 24 clones were validated and positive to the MMAE and negative to the MMAF. Further ELISA um, and e EC50 validations were performed on the client selected 15 clone purified antibody. With the rapid robust immune system, we are able to achieve the goal to deliver anti-MMAE antibody without cross-react with the MMAF. So in the last case study, uh, which I share here, we actually developed the rapid anti-ID using a SCFB as an immunogen for CAR-T customer. It was first tried in the mouse antibody generation platform with different immunization strategy. However, um, there is no good clone were generated. Therefore, we actually changed to another host as a rabbit have a robust immune system which can generate a high specificity, affinity, and more diversified antibody. The goal of the project is for fax uh, applications. SCFV was uh, immunizing the rabbit with express uh, strategy. After the third rounds of the immunization, the serum titer is good enough to move on to the B-cell clonings. After the B-cell cloning, the facts uh, tests on the B-cell supernatants were validated. Clone 1 and clone 2 supernatants are able to detect the overexpressed cell line. In summary of our NTIID service, we have a high success rate, um, which is 99.5% success project will deliver. We also guarantee uh, to obtain the blocking NTIID antibody and cross rate less than 2%. Besides, we do have a mouse, rabbit, whole species available. Therefore, we can actually provide a superior antibody diversity. Moreover, we actually utilize the advanced uh, affinity and specificity screening like ELISA, BRI, or SPR to perform uh, affinity ranking through blocking ELISA to identify blocking or non-blocking antibody as well. Lastly, we are able to uh, produce one-stop solution for antigen preparation to antibody developments and afterwards kit development, which I will share in the last sections. Let's move on to the next poll questions. Yes, so appearing on everyone's screen right now is our second poll question. The question we're asking this time is what kind of immunogen targets could GenScript accept for anti-ID development? Your answer options are DNA, ADC, VHH, or all of the above. As with the previous one, please consider your answer, select one of them in front of you, and then click Submit in order to participate. We'll give everyone a few more seconds to consider their answer as it best applies to yourself or your company. The question again is what kind of immunogen targets could GenScript accept for anti-ID development? Looks like most of you have participated, so thank you very much. Let's take a look at the results. It looks like we have 87% for all of the above and then 13% of you selecting ADC. Very interesting. Uh, Dr. Tan, I'll hand it back to you. Okay, so the answer is all of above, and we can actually uh, accept all the DNA and antibody drug conjugates, or even a small molecule, which is like a VHS as well. Besides then, that, we do have a capabilities of like generating um, bispecific antibody as a immunogens, and for this kind of assay uh, and DID development as well. Okay, let's move on to the next section. So uh, in the last sections, I shall actually discuss the strategy we actually use to develop the PK and ADA kits from NTID discovery to uh, kit development. So ELISA kit development involves choosing an appropriate format, gathering the need needs uh, components and constructing the working protocol for, for the design AC. ELISA optimization involves uh, systematically adjusting and testing the many components and variables to help ensure results are correct. Therefore, there are actually certain key parameters to follow in the KIP developments like sensitivity, accuracy, precision, stability, selectivity, and other parameters such as like the drug resistance or dilution, leadinizations, and so on. 
So acid sensitivity actually refer to the abilities of uh, um, methods or instruments to detect and, and light at a specific concentration and is often defined by a detection limit. The lowest uh, limit of quantitations is the lowest standard curve point that can actually still be used for quantifications. There are the values above this quantity quantitative result may be obtained with a specific degree of confidence or the lowest concentrations of the analyte that can be accurately measured. The accuracies of the kids' developments is also important and coefficients variations should be um, plus minus 10% of the ter theoretically result. So for the kit um, precision within run and between run, the CV values need to be within um, plus minus uh, 20% and we normally will control it to be plus minus um, 10% within run and plus minus 15% between run. So in the stability test uh, reagents using the ACA are the thermal stable. It is important to uh, validate how long this developed uh, ELISA kit can last and effectively. And uh, normally it can actually last about one year for 80% of the ELISA kit. The selectivity is crucial for ELISA kit development through uh, adding drug sample in the 10 individual source blank control serum to verify the system to minimize or avoid the interference. If the interference uh, CV values is um, plus minus 20% for at least 80% of the samples controlled, then this is considered good. So at GeneScript, our customized uh, ELISA kit develop, uh, generation service uh, specifically develop um, kits that enable reliable detections and quantitative of our clients' unit antigens. We have more than 10 years of uh, kit development experience. Each kit undergoes extensive ACA development and validation to ensure its sensitivity against client desired targets. With our extensive optimization process, we ensure a high quality custom ELISA kit will uh, perform in client requirements. We are able to provide a various um, testing application kits based on uh, customer needs. The whole process actually starts from antibody uh, discovery to kit developments. We actually start from um, the immunogen preparations and animal immunization. After that, perform the antibody generation in different platforms like hybridoma, B cell cloning, or advanced beacons platform. When the antibodies uh, are generated, we will actually perform affinity ranking, epitope beginnings, and pairing to actually characterize the uh, antibody leads. Then ultimately, we will actually start with the kit developments. For example, PK kits developments, anti geotypic antibody candidates will be generated at the discovery um, part and move on to the PK kit development, which I shall share more information in the next slide. Here is the workflow in the kit development part. First, we will actually perform proof of concept uh, in one or two weeks. In this step, um, we actually start with identifying the best pair of antibodies and evaluate the performance in the sensitivity and specificity checking. We perform the optimize uh, and optimize uh, the dilution concentrations and serum val validation based on the customer need to establish the standard curve and evaluate the consistent data from the customer organization. Second step, which is to perform the ACA developments based on their pair antibody. We have to optimize the parameters and um, condition for, um, for example, coating concentration, detections, reagent concentration, dilutions, and blocking buffer optimization as well. We will actually evaluate the specificity of the antibody by testing different concentrations of similar target to understand the in interference level. So in the third step, we will actually perform assay validation, which is require, require three to four weeks time. We will actually manufacture uh, five kits for assay validation to track the stability, accuracy, and variability, uh, variations of the assay kits. For the criteria of the ACA kit, we will actually make sure the intra-ACA precision is less than 10%. 
and the inter ACA precision is less than 15%, uh, and the recovery range is plus minus 15% according to the FDA requirements. After all these steps pass through the requirements, then we will actually perform keep manufacturing, which will require another two to three weeks. Customer can order start from five kits. In the antibody drug discovery process, PK and ADA uh, ELISA kit are commonly used to validate the safety of the develop, uh, developed drug. In the ADA ELISA kit developments, we actually normally require a 13 to 19 weeks. For the PK ELISA kit developments, we require 9 to 13 weeks. So this is one of the PK sandwich ELISA developed by, by us. And these kits, we actually have uh, developed and met and exceed the FDA requirements. The precision uh, intra-ASA variations and the inter-ASA variations are both less than 5%. And for FDA requirements, which are less than 20%, we are able to meet and the accuracy and recovery as what FDA uh, require as well. So ADA drug validations is important in the drug and discovery and development step. When drug is taken and uh, going into the human body, sometimes body will actually create the antibody to neutralize the drug antibody, then which will actually inhibit um, the drug activity and reduce the efficacy. Other than that, sometimes it will actually cause the anti-drug antibody immune response, which will pose a danger to life. According to FDA uh, guideline, um, it will, uh, which recommended for the drug immunogenicity should be monitored and tested in the preclinical, clinical phase one, two, three, and post marketing to ensure the drug safety. So in the validations ACA developments, we can actually perform in direct or indirect ELISA if an antibody drug induced the development of anti drug antibody, then um, they can actually be detected through direct binding ELISA. In this ACA, an antibody drug coated plate is washed with serum. The plate is then actually washed with a label IgG, which only bind to the constant regions of the anti-drug antibody. Therefore, the ELISA will only show frozen if um, there are antibody drug antibody present in the sample serum. In the second type, which is the uh, bridging ELISA format, an antibody drug coated plate is exposed to the serum, allowing the anti drug antibody capture. The same antibody drug, um, but label, is used to detect of the anti, anti drug antibody through the binding to the SEFV regions. Both of these assays need to be analyzed via a positive control, such as anti geotypic antibodies. So we are actually experts in customized antibody and ELISA kit development uh, service. We actually deliver customized ELISA kit with a high quality. We have actually followed a stringent clinical uh, FDA um, grade development standards. Our kit release above FDA standards, for example, the kit's recovery is uh, between 80 to 120 percent and the precision CV is less than 10 percent. We have more than 18 years of antibody discovery experience and deliver more than 70 kits projects with more than 150,000 kits to deliver. We actually provide a one-stop uh, service from antibody discovery to kit development to match a different application requirement. In summary, we actually can um, provide a rapid NTID discovery platform, ensure our researcher to generate a high affinity and diversify antibody in a relatively short period of time, which is start from uh, eight weeks. We actually successfully deliver 99.5% uh, of NTID project with a cross rate um, less than 2%. Besides, we also, we also provide a one-stop um, solution service from antibody discovery to kit developments. We successfully deliver 98% uh, of uh, high-quality kits, which actually met the FDA standard requirement in a short turnaround time. So let's move on to the last poll question. Yeah. 
Yes, thank you. So our final poll question as we move towards our Q&A session is, are you interested in kit development? Your answer options are yes, no, or maybe in six or 12 months later. Please take a moment to consider your answer, select one of them in front of you and click submit to participate. The question again is, are you interested in kit development? Give everyone a few more seconds to consider your answer and then we'll take a look and move into a Q&A session. Looks like most of you have voted, so thank you very much for participating. Let's look at our results from this. Looks like we have 50% for no, 10% for yes, and then 40% for maybe in six or 12 months from now. So thank you very much for participating. Dr. Tan, it's back to you. Thanks for the participation. And okay, that's all for my presentation today. And thanks for your attention. Um, please feel free to leave your question in the chat box and I shall try my best to answer your questions. Thank you. Well, and thank you very much for that insightful presentation. At this point, I'd like to invite the audience to continue sending their questions or comments right now using the questions window for this Q&A portion of our webinar. Now, I've already received some questions for you, so we'll get ourselves started with those. The very first question that I have would like to know, what are the benefits of using your express immunization method compared to conventional? So, um, so our express um, proprietary immunization actually can shorten the antibody discovery timeline. So, which will be actually the proprietary vaccination technology actually can shorten the time it takes to deliver the test sample to our customer and to do some in-house testing. So, besides than that, the rapid immunizations uh, increase the diversity of the antibody based on what uh, our study uh, showed that, and it also should have a more positive and higher affinity uh, clones uh, developed in by using an express immunization from gene script. And besides then that, we also uh, successfully generate antibody which uh, the target antigens is actually highly homologous to the immunized animal host. So it also creates a stronger immunity to the modified target if we actually use our express immunization methods. Very good, interesting, thank you very much. Um, as we continue with the Q&A session, I should mention to the audience that we also have a handouts module within the GoToWebinar control panel, where you'll find some additional documentation related to today's presentation to download for some further reading. Our next question that I have for you, Dr. Tan would like to know, how do we select between polyclonal and monoclonal anti-idiotypic antibodies during the process of drug discovery development? Okay, so for monoclonal anti-ID uh, are normally used to detect the plasma concentration of the antibody drug for PK or ADA analysis. However, for polyclonal anti-ID antibody um, pur is purified directly from the antiserum can actually uh, better stimulate the real conditions of the in the blood uh, sample. So, which will be actually useful for those actually who want to do uh, immuno uh, immunogenesis testing. So uh, for polyclonal anti-ID uh, generation from GeneScript, we are actually able to perform start from eight weeks and with uh, which have a shorter preparation cycle and have a lower cost as well. And But uh, the consistency, if you would like to compare with the monoclonal anti-ID, the consistency for batch to batch reproducibility for polyclonal is lower and the specificity is lower in the polyclonal corner as well. So for monoclonal anti-ID, uh, we will normally start from 13 weeks and the advantages of uh, monoclonal anti-ID is actually we uh, we have a higher specificity and uh, because the antibody is targeted to a single epitope and we can get a more higher batch to batch um, reproducibility between different batches. This is some of the um, answer for these questions, yeah. All right, wonderful. Thank you so much for that answer. The next question is curious, what strategies do you use to generate and differentiate blocking and non-blocking anti-IDs? 
So for our anti uh, monoclonal antibody discovery, we will actually first screen with the antigens, which is like a, a like full land antibodies or the FAB um, binding ability, and then actually we will perform some doing some counter screening for total human IgG or the human IgG four, um, and then to help our client to verify that whether the antibody is blocker or non blocker, we will actually perform some kind of um, blocking. Uh, ELISA assay um, to check the like a competitive ELISA. For example, we will normally code the antigens or antibody drug on the plate of the on the ELISA plate, and then afterwards we will also add on with the antigens and the antibody drug together with the B cell supernatant at the same time. Compare between the control. Uh, control well, which is only the PBS and the blank media, then the OD, val OD values will be actually different and we can actually calculate the um, blocking or competitive ratios of the B cell supernatant, um, which containing the discovery antibody. All right, very good. Thank you so much. The next question then is wondering what success rate, uh, what's the success rate for blocking and non-blocking antibody and anti-ID projects? Mm, so for the for the success rate for the blocking antibody is 100% with what we can actually obtain and for the non blocking antibody which is um, more than 8, 90% so for anti id project it is more uh, easy to get a blocking um, antibody rather than the non blocking because um, we can actually get many positive uh, binders to the whole antibody itself however after screening through by using a human total human igg or the control isotype, the remaining NTID uh, positive um, binders are mostly the CDR binders and showing uh, partially blockers or to, uh, total blo blockings of um, effect between the antibody and its ligands. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. So the next question I have here for you wonders, what is the time required to complete a mouse MAB campaign? So the mouse NAB campaign, it actually our project will be mostly uh, dependent on what kind of what kind of uh, immunogen our client pro, uh, send us. If it will normally start from 13 weeks, so we will actually evaluate um, the immunogen which client needs and give you a proposal which is giving you a timeline and the pricing as well. So please feel free to drop us a message or um, yeah, we can actually help to help you to have a TC to understand what is your project needs and then possible we will give you a roughly timeline for, for the project. Wonderful. And on that note, then, I want to thank you for the answers for all of these questions. We have reached the end, though, of the Q&A portion for our webinar. Now, if we couldn't attend to your questions, the team at GenScript will follow up with you. Or if you have further questions, you can direct them to the email address that's up on your screen. I want to thank everyone for participating in today's webinar. You will be receiving a follow-up email from Xtalks with access to the recorded archive for this event. A survey window will be popping up on your screen as you exit, and your participation is appreciated as it helps us to improve our webinars. Now, I've also sent you a link in the chat box, and with this link, you'll be able to view the recording of this event on this page, and you can also share this link with your colleagues when they register for the recording here as well. So I encourage you to do that. Now, please join me once more in thanking our speaker for her wonderful time here today. We hope that you found the webinar informative. Have a great day, everybody, and thank you for coming. Thank you.